Welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. I want to continue my little history lesson, uh, bringing us up to the 1970s. And uh, we're going to use the aggregate supply, aggregate demand framework, but we're going to focus on the Phillips curve version. So we put the rate of change of prices, or the inflation rate, on the vertical axis, and we will put the unemployment rate on the horizontal axis. And if we look at the sort of the, <coughs> the 1950s, 1960s, we see a pretty fairly stable Phillips curve. And in fact, the Phillips curve might have been described in that period as well, let me define the misery index, which is something that was actually, that's a term that came up later, equals the inflation rate plus the unemployment rate. And if, in general, if we set the misery index equal to about 7 to 7.5, 7 to 7.5, uh, <coughs> That pretty much describes what happened in the 50s and the 60s. So you would kind of go back and forth when uh, when you brought the unemployment rate down. Sorry, when you brought the unemployment rate down, you would get higher inflation, and when we brought the inflation rate down, you would get higher unemployment. So, uh, but it was pretty stable, and the sum of the two seemed to fall between 7 and 7.5. Then, in the 1970s, this Phillips curve seemed to go berserk. What happened, instead of falling along a line like this, uh, or instead of falling along a line like that, we started to observe... points like this. So <coughs> inflation going up and unemployment going up at the same time. So the Phillips curve had go seemed to go completely berserk. And the way mainstream economics ultimately came to interpret that was that the Phillips curve kept shifting up. So the Phillips curve shifted up in the 1970s. And that's actually when this term misery index was coined, because the misery index would get up to 15 to 20 percent in places like this you would get the misery index could be 15 to 20 percent. That is inflation plus unemployment rate would total 15 or 20 percent. So what was going on? Uh, two things were causing this shift. So two causes for the shift. One was some adverse supply shocks. This is when OPEC raised oil prices. Okay, so in terms of aggregate supply and demand, and this is actually when the whole uh, this whole framework of aggregate supply and demand was fully developed uh, at this to uh, allow for this OPEC situation. So OPEC was a raising prices was a, an adverse supply shift. So these are these are all short run aggregate supply curve, aggregate demand, and this is a new so. SRIS prime is the post oil price increase supply curve and what that meant was that prices were higher and output was lower. 
So, bad things all around. And when you translate that to a Phillips curve, what that means is that the Phillips curve is taking an adverse shift. The other thing that was adversely affecting the Phillips curve was inflation expectations. That is, people expected inflation to be high, so they, <coughs> um, workers asked for higher wage increases, and that in turn led to price increases and inflation high. So it was kind of this self-perpetuating sort of situation and one of the things that <coughs> compounded it was that the uh, monetary policy for a long time didn't recognize that things were shifting. So if so this is your Phillips curve and suppose that um, monetary policy is based on the assumption that the natural rate of unemployment, the rate of un or the non inf the non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment is let's say they they're thinking that it's um, four percent. But suppose the true natural rate um, non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment is actually five percent. That means when they aim for four percent they're actually going to get so they think the Phillips curve looks like this. In fact maybe the Phillips curve looks something like this. And so when they aim for four percent unemployment, then they should be aiming for five, and they aim for four, they get a lot of they get a lot more inflation. And then they maybe gradually and they gradually correct themselves. They think, oh well, maybe the natural rate of unemployment is five percent, and then because of the supply shock or something else, the natural rate of unemployment was even higher. So the natural rate of unemployment. or the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment was drifting up and the policymakers didn't catch on. And so they kept pursuing, they kept thinking they could drive the unemployment rate lower than they could and the net result was that they just drove up inflation and that in turn fed the inflation expectations. And so <clears throat> by the end of the 1970s, uh, the, a lot of economists had lost faith in the Phillips curve. And there was a lot, instead, a lot of focus on vertical, long run, and aggregate supply. The whole no, people hadn't even draw, thought of drawing an aggregate supply, a lo, the long run aggregate supply curve until the 70s. You know, they, they'd all, always assumed that there was just the short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand. And now they, they begin to see that there's this constraint of long run aggregate supply or a natural rate of unemployment U star in the Phillips curve drawing. And that's how, <coughs> so that's where this
these concepts of long-run aggregate supply and nat natural rate of unemployment or non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment were developed in the 1970s to explain the crazy movements where inflation and unemployment were both rising at the same time. And uh, I'll get to the, the more recent economic history next time.